What is going on guys, Victor here. And as you guys see, we are no longer in Florida. I'm actually up in Mattapoisett, Mass, Massachusetts. And we got Tyler McAllister and Bob. And this is actually Bob's oyster farm. I've never been oystering before. Is that what you guys would say, oystering? Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm super stoked. I've never done this before. And I told you guys I wanna share everything the outdoors has to offer with you guys. So we got Carl from Dexter Outdoors who set this trip up. You guys saw him in the keys and we got Brookie behind the camera. Now let's go catch some oysters and then some quahogs. Is this a marsh, a saltwater marsh? Yes, that, that all back there is saltwater marsh. This is, yeah. all, this is all flats, or tidal, tidal flats. Does the tide come all the way up to these baskets? Yeah, the tide comes, right now we've got a good new moon tide. It's almost to the tree line. High tide right now will be about here. We have about a, a five to six foot swing right now in our tides. The low is going to be probably up into the baskets. These baskets have been out here since um, April. How long are you raising for? These are a year old. We're starting to get market size now. And nice deep cup oyster. Nice clean hard shell. Because what we do is we have these baskets on these lines. Um, 16 months to a year and a half. A lot of them will be ready to go. This all ices up, so we've got to pack everything oh. up and put it out and see where that raft is out there in deeper water for the winter. A lot of a lot of winters it'll get six to eight inches of ice in here. Wow. And then there's a tide that then so we gotta get all these pipes out because the ice is just gonna latch onto these and go up and down with the tide and then the take wind, it away. then take it all away. So, so it's not there. really like farm farm they're in a they're in their natural habitat, right? Right. So it's right. not like they're in some facility and you guys are giving them, you're bringing water and pumping it there. It's No, it's all uh, just taking advantage of the tides and the wind and uh, and a good growing spot with plenty of food. So are they considered farm raised or wild? Farm raised. Farm raised. Yeah, yeah they're not wild caught. They're, they've been cultivated from okay. from inception to sale. They've, they're basically a cultivated product. Once they're getting to to market size there, each one of these guys is siphoning about 50 gallons of water a day. Whoa. So about a hundred of those two liter uh, soda bottles, each one of these guys. So they need, um, they, they grow fast and they need a lot of water to grow well. So what are, Bob, what are all of these things? Are these all little clams? These are, no, these are just mud snails. Oh, mud snails. They're keeping the bottom nice and clean. Yeah. They eat whatever. These guys. They're everywhere. Detritus is floating around, they'll do a tune on it. So they're a good thing to have around. Bob's actually doing a service by keeping an oyster population going in an area where there really wasn't an oyster population to start with. Bob also donates some expertise to the town for our for the local town oyster operations. And every once in a while we take a whole bunch of bushels of quahogs out of here and, and spread them out in the public areas for people to uh, come and get. So if you spread them apart in an area, will they reproduce on their own? Yeah. 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 If the conditions are right. No Probably Joe Schmo ones. can just go out and put in baskets like you have, right? You need a permit, I'm yeah. assuming? Permits from the town, the state, and the federal. How long can they stay out of the water like that? Uh, they can stay out for 24 to 36 hours. Wow. So we take all our markets, well everything goes out in the deeper water and in the winter we, we have a little skiff that we just kind of use as a sled because usually this is iced over and you can just walk across the ice. Oh, this will all ice over? Yeah. They spend, what, from like December to March down in, in the deep? Yeah. yeah. And then we'll pull them out in April, starting in April. Now what about predators? Anything comes in here and tries to mess with your baskets? Well, um, the predators, there's, there's mollusks actually, uh, oyster drill, which looks pretty innocuous. It's just, a, it's almost looks like these guys. It's got a little different shell shape. They'll actually mechanically and chemically drill a perfect tiny little round hole in the shell and then inject digestive juices mm. and then draw out the animal. And, and even though they're small, they can be in such numbers that if they, that they can really do a tune on things. But having them up here, off the bottom. Okay. Um, That's one reason for the baskets? Yeah, there's a couple reasons. One, you get better water flow up and higher up in the water column, they grow better. I gotta ask, can we try some oysters? Oh yeah. You wanna yeah. try some right oh, now? Oh yeah. Alright. I'm ready. So we use these knives to um it's a little dexter oyster. Yeah, to pry apart if when we're culling oysters and if they're stuck together that hook's perfect to pry them apart. And then if there are any you can see how scarred up the handle is because we use that to hammer off any barnacles that might be on it. 
get through the hinge pretty easy with it. And then Oh no lemon or anything out here, but no, this is just this is the real deal as raw, as natural, as fresh as it gets. Did you eat it? Yeah, it's so good. Really salty. And you can taste the sand and everything in there, but it's part of the game, you know? It's natural. It's really good. Brooke. Come on, <laughs> come on, you're in New England, you got to. I'll do You it. have to try it, Brooke. You no. have to try it. <laughs> I'm not. Nobody will judge you if you have to, have to spit it out. It's either that no. or a raw clam. Carl, you like oysters, or right? I love oysters. All right, let's see it. As fresh as it gets. That's right, excellent. Very briny tasting, mm-hmm, perfect. You farm raise them, but if someone wanted to go out and catch them on their own, there's a recreational fishery for them? A recreational fishery. There's quite a quite a decent one going with what has spawned out of here. It's all over these rocks. Take a screwdriver or a little hammer or something with you and knock them off the rocks. Can we catch a wild one? Yeah, we can go, we can go take one. All right. All right guys, so we're gonna walk over to these rocks over here and try to get some wild oysters, even though there's baskets full of them over there. But that was delicious, but let's go see if the wild ones taste any different. I don't think they're going to. Same water. Another thing I wanted to ask you, so we have oyster bars down in Florida. Yeah. Like in the bays and stuff. Is that the same type of oyster? The same yeah, it's, species? Yeah, it's all base, basically um, the Eastern, American Eastern oyster. But uh, just, um, you know, they acquire different flavors depending on where they're grown. Okay. You know, knock these guys off. You can see in the wild, they. They're they not growing the same compact cup shape, but um, but they certainly taste the same. And uh, the other thing is, in the winter, you can see some winter kill because these are exposed. Uh, uh, if this was so, this is an empty one right yeah, here. Right there. Or you get the the ice going up and down will knock them off, and then you end up with a lot of these kind of just sitting down on the bottom. You can pick up. Oh, some people go in on the side over here. That's the smaller side of the oyster. Yeah, but um, that's where the back muscle is. And what you muscle you call that one? Well, there's a back hinge, the back and then there's muscle. an adductor muscle it's right there. Yep, it's at the top. Yeah, and um, is it is it just called cleaning an oyster or is shucking. It shucking? Shucking. So anytime you're uh, cleaning a shellfish, it's shucking. Uh, yeah, if you're opening it up. Okay. You want to see if, how that one is? So, like, we've caught scallops before in steam hatching, and when we do scallops, there's uh, a lot of waste you have to remove. It doesn't seem like there's any. Yeah, the only waste, thing in right? the scallop you eat is that adductor muscle. Oh. That's the only thing you eat in the scallop. So, this Let's... is like 100% yield, isn't it? Yeah. As okay. far as. Yeah. All right, ready, round two. It's much saltier than you would get in a restaurant. Much saltier. But I like it. I like that flavor. But very good. I'm always the brinier or saltier the better. Yeah. Can't go wrong with more salt. You're eating <laughs> seafood. How many, that? How many oysters do you think that Dexter knife is open? Oh. That's a good one. Hundreds. We do, a, we do a raw bar for, there's a fundraiser in town that we donate our time and, and oysters to. And um, we blow through 600 in less than an hour. <laughs> for the fundraiser, oh and uh, we've done that for a few years. Can you hold that thing up? Sure. I want to see. Yeah, that's that's a Dexter S121 oyster knife, or it's an S126 has been bent, but uh, no, it came that way. It came okay. So came, a, a Dexter yeah. S121 oyster knife. That's that's uh, got the same safe handle. It's got a little bit of a bent bent tip to it, so you can uh, um, get in there to pry it a little bit better at prying open the oyster, and uh, it's, it, it looks like it's been worn. Yeah. So yeah, yeah and we use that that bent. Part's great too for just when we're culling and trying to separate oysters yes. that are stuck together. And you can see that handle's all beat up because we knocked the barnacles off with yeah. that end. That, Which is why it's a, that nice big ball bend is good for a hammer too. So that knife has cleaned hundreds, if not thousands, of oysters. Oh yeah. Plus culled through thousands and thousands. If 
you drop it in the water, there's just enough buoyancy in that handle that, it, that it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, on, it's sitting on the bottom like that. Handle That's some up. good product engineering, isn't it? <laughs> That's great. All right, so this is going to be the first video you guys are seeing from the whole Northeast series. And big thank you to Carl because he's the one who set this trip up. Dexter Outdoors is huge in the Northeast. They make a ton of products. So I'm going to be covering a lot of their stuff in these videos. So I'll have all their stuff linked in the description in the description box below and who better to ask what the best oyster knife is than an oyster farmer tool we use every day when carl told me we're gonna go to an oyster farm i was thinking of like giant aquarium type thing with cages and filters and pumps and all that but isn't it right brooke well you think of farm and you think i don't know i was thinking of like a fish farm kind of thing yeah. you know Bob's operation helps, actually helps keep the waters of Mat Mattapoisa cleaner. One of the biggest reasons the Chesapeake remains a clean estuary, estuarine system, is because there's so many oysters. They are such good filter feeders and they filter so much water in a day. They keep the rivers and the Chesapeake Bay very clean. Bob's oysters do the exact same thing here in Mattapoisa. We have not had a problem with red tides or overabundance of aquatic algae that I can remember, and I've been here almost 20 years, when in this say, area. When you say red tide, you're talking about the same one we have down south? Yeah, you can go to any one of the rocks in this whole area, and you're gonna find oysters where there never used to be an oyster, and that's mm. because these oysters were raised here, and they spat here, and they're staying here, and they're moving out you know, into Brant Island Cove. This is all Brant Island Cove, and they're heading their way into towards Fairhaven. More it's oysters, cleaner water, right? More oysters, cleaner water, exactly right. So Bricky and I are both making videos from this trip and we're gonna try to keep them as separate and distinct as possible. So if you guys wanna see her version, I'll have it linked below because we're trying to get like the different aspects of Bob's talking, Tyler's talking. There's, we're just taking in so much. I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be a great trip. Stripers, Taw Tog, Bluefin Tuna, just everything. And I'm excited to just take in all of the New England life in. So I'm walking back to the shoreline, gonna pop a new battery in this camera and get the drone in the air. And I think it'll be really neat to show you guys what this place looks like from above. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'll see you guys in the sky. This has two adductor muscles as opposed to the oyster only has one. This has one smaller one on each side. There's one there and there's one there. And this is a thinner blade so it gets between those shells nice. They are a tasty little unit. What do you like more, the oysters or the quahogs? Well, I'm afraid to admit I like quahogs a little bit better. Oh, I agree. man. But, uh, but I, I like oysters. But oysters are fun to grow. I've never had a raw clam, I don't think. Cheers. <laughs> I think I like the oyster more. <laughs> This is really good. The oyster is a lot more tender. You know how some people don't like that snotty flavor? I guess I kind of like that, that it goes down real easy. This is, you got to chew it a little bit more, but both great. I mean, fresh out of the water with that view in the background and all these good people, you can't get better than that. All right, guys, we're no longer on the oyster farm. We're actually with Tyler on his boat, the Cynthia C squared, and we actually took some oysters and clams on the boat with us. We're gonna throw them on the grill, which is gonna be a really nice treat, and get you guys hyped up for a bluefin tuna video, which is gonna be coming up in this series as well. We got some lemons. We forgot the Tabasco, and we're gonna throw some oysters. And some clams. And some clams on the good old Weber grill. How long do you think they take to open up? Uh, not very long. Uh, this oyster is ready. We have another oyster ready. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Victor, you're you're up there, Victor. Yeah. Look at that. 
fresh lemon juice. Still have a little bit of the juice from the oyster itself. never tastes better than when it's on a boat, especially when it's freezing cold. And I don't care what freezing you're cooking. Cold. Freezing cold. There's whales right behind you. <laughs> they may be coming so this you way. see, freezing they're cold. busting my chops because this is freezing cold for Brooke and I. I guess I'm not ready for uh, New England December, am I? So now we're going to do a little bit of the clam. Some lemon juice. Just, raw, just bait nothing on them. No seasonings. Just some fresh lemon juice. All right, oyster gonna, all the way. Up here on a whale. Really? Oyster all the way. Once you've eaten the oyster and the clam back to back, not saying clams aren't good, they're delicious, but the oyster, that's another level. Much better. I'm, thinking, oh, yeah. I'm really thinking the clam. I, I really love the clams. The oyster was good, but I like oysters raw rather than steamed like that on the grill. The oyster was more like gooey. That's what you want. Yeah. That's what you I like know. raw. <laughs> That's why I don't like them raw. That's why I think I like the clam better. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off these clams and oysters. Like we're ago. still waiting on that bluefin bite, and that'll be in a separate video because it's a. Even if we don't catch one, it's just a really cool process between everything and learning about fishery here. So that's all the time I got for you guys today. Look forward to a lot more of these Northeast videos, and I'll catch you guys in that next video. Oh, this is gonna be cool. Bob, Charlotte, Bob, Victor, Bob, Carl. My name's actually Brooke. 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 You almost said it. Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs>